In today's video, I'm going to be giving you the ultimate operator guide for the rushing machine, Thinker. We're going to start off with their ability, move on to the role and the playstyle that you should be using, and end off with the loadout, so make sure you stick around to the end to know what weapons to be running with her. If this guide does help you out, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe for future operator guides. Let's start off with Thinker's ability. Thinker's ability is an adrenal surge. What it allows her to do is heal three times. Now, when I say heal, what I mean by this is that Finker is going to be able to use her ability three times, and what it does is it increases you and your teammates' HP temporarily for 20 HP. If you're on 100 HP, you'll get boosted up to 120. After the timer expires, the ability deactivates. It's going to go down to 100. Again, if you end up being on 60 HP, it goes to 80 HP. Now, if you end up getting shot when the ability is active, it's going to help you out a ton here because that extra health is going to come in very handy. It's not going to take it all away. If you're on 60 HP, you get shot down to 50 HP. You're going to be on 40 HP after the ability is expired. Essentially, if someone takes off 20 HP worth of damage onto you, you're not going to then lose another 20 HP when the ability deactivates. It's going to save you right there. There are an absolute ton of different buffs that you can get, and there are also a few negatives that will happen when you activate her ability, and it will be applied to across the whole team. A great buff is that you can, in fact, revive your teammates when they're in the down burn out position. Well, that's if you want to, because if they've been giving you a bit of backlash in the previous rounds, maybe they didn't make that rotate hole where you wanted it, or they stole your operator. I guess, all of a sudden, your ability has, has ran out. However, Finker cannot revive herself. This feature is not out yet for Year 6. So if you get down as Finker, you're going to need one of your teammates to pick you up. The other different buffs that you're going to gain is one, for example, Recoil Control. When you activate her ability for that period of time that it is active, you are going to have a massive reduction on your recoil. It actually cuts in half. On top of that, you're also going to gain that health boost. Your ADS time will also be increased, which means it's going to be a lot quicker when you're trying to aim down your sight and aim him on that weapon. You also have a shorter concussion time from an Echo Yokai, or simply a Zephyr concussion, or on the defense side, you would obviously be facing an Ella concussion. So your concussion time gets reduced if you are currently getting hit by it, or if you have already been hit by it, you activate that ability and it's going to completely cut out and counter the concussion. If you're facing an Echo and a Yokai and the Echo Yokai ends up concussing you, Finker activates her ability, bam, there you go, that concussion is gone immediately. On top of that, you can move through barbed wire a lot quicker when using Finker. And another one is that your reload time is a lot quicker when you are going to be having that Finker ability active compared to if it wasn't on. Now, there are also a few negatives that you need to know about when facing certain operators with Finker or a Finker on your team. If that Finker ability is active, you are going to take more damage when you are facing a smoke canister or in it. You want to stay as far away as you can from smoke canisters when that Finker ability is activated because the gas is going to do a lot more damage. On top of that, Pulse's ability will be able to see you from a further distance when the Finker ability is activated. And it does make sense because your heartbeat is increased. That is how Pulse will detect you. And those are the only two. Pulse and Smoke are the ones you want to be wary of when you have a Finker on your team. The majority of the benefits are great to have alongside you. However, there are going to be a few more that you're going to need to have a little bit more consideration over. That recoil reduction, if you're not prepared for it, is going to throw you off completely. It can be a benefit and a massive negative if you don't know about it. When your recoil starts getting reduced, it is an unusual recoil pattern that you're not used to. Even if it makes it less and smaller, it's still going to be hard to control. However, if you expect it and you know what's coming, you can adjust your aim and it's a lot easier to control and is a big benefit to have. Which is why communicating with your team is crucial. It's very easy for a player to know that the thinker ability is activated, but in the heat of the moment, it's very easy for a player to forget that that recoil reduction is happening. So communicating with your team, giving them the heads up that the thinker ability is going to be active, to make sure that their recall is going to be adjusted. Simply that quick little communication is going to help them out a lot, even before it's active. The recall reduction can make weapons like the SAS-G, which is in a loadout, fantastic to use because it completely reduces the recoil and it's very, very powerful. The same applies to any weapon. The increased ADS time is going to be huge for players who play the shield operator like Blitz or a Montane because you are going to be ADS a lot quicker when using a shield. That's a big benefit and should give you an insight on what combinations you can run on your team. Again, this is also applied to any weapon, so it helps out your team a ton in that situation. Remember, you must be very careful with the recoil, as it can make your aim look a bit like this. Communication is absolutely key, as you can pull off a lot of rushes with your team if you are coordinating, using your thinker ability, an operator like Lion, a Blitz, for example, a Dokubi, if you want to go down that route. 
expect some backlash from the enemy team. Now, a massive thank you to Kafalor, who is supporting me on my Patreon page with the All Access Pass, giving him a ton of benefits ranging from a one-hour consultation with me and a ton more. Thank you for your support, and there's a link down below to my Patreon page. Another example of where communication is key is that a teammate can shout out that they're downed, you might not see them across the map, you can revive them. Again, an Elamine or an Echo Concussion could happen, your teammate can call it out, they can activate the ability straight away to cancel it out. On top of that, you can avoid stuff when a teammate might need a bit of extra sound, because a thinker ability makes a lot of noise. You can communicate with each other, tell each other that, and again with a smoke canister, don't activate the ability, there's a smoke near me. Now next up, we're going to be moving on to Thinker's playstyle and role, and this is crucial for you playing with her. Thinker is a jack of all trades, she can be a flex, she can be a support, and an energy fragger. Her ability is great for support, and ideally when playing support, you want to be staying back, making sure that you get the most out of your ability, listening to your team, and using all three of those charges. On the flip side, she can also be a great entry fragger because she is able to be rushing in quick, especially with that shotgun and her ability is completely designed for rushing. You can very easily take a lot of map control with it and clear out any roamers in your path. If you are using a full 5 stack communication, you can very easily pull this off as a 5 man. It is also doable in solo queue, you just have to be a bit more careful with how you're going to be rushing. But there is a difference to rushing in like a headless chicken and a coordinated rush. We've all been there while we've rushed in, not gave it a second thought, and hit a frost mat on the way in. Well, maybe it's just me that it happens to, but swiftly moving on is Finker's loadout. Finker has three different weapons that she's going to offer you here. All of them are completely viable for different situations and playstyles, so you need to know this. Finker has the Spear 308, the LMG, and the SASG, a fantastic shotgun. The Spear 308 is your typical AR that's slow firing and does a decent amount of damage. It is definitely a viable AR, however, it has a very, very slow fire rate. The LMG, on the other hand, definitely has a decent amount of damage to it, and again, a lot of bullets in that magazine. On top of that, it also is a slow firing weapon too, but it is definitely making up for it in the damage. The SASG is a shotgun that is very quick firing and does a decent amount of damage too, quite a lot to be fair, but it does have a substantial amount of recoil. These weapons on their own aren't the best, but they suit Finker's ability very well because that reduced recoil that increased reload time is going to help out an absolute ton. Take your pick of the LMG or the AR, it completely depends on what you prefer, or you can go with that shotgun, which is great for rushing, and that's the best situation I'd recommend using it in. For a secondary, she has the brand new gadget coming with Crimson Highs, the GON-6. And then she has a standard PMM, which is the regular pistol. The PMM is your option of an actual secondary weapon, or if you want to go with something to clear more utility, go with the GON-6. It can take out deployable shields, a ton of utility, but it doesn't do any damage at all, only 20. Then she does have the hard breach charge or the stun grenades for your option here for the gadget. The hard breach charge is a great addition for Finker and I found myself using that a lot. However, when other players on the team were bringing it, if we have a hard breacher and someone else with that gadget, it doesn't really come in handy too much. Which is why the stun grenades can definitely be a viable option for burning ADSs, wasting utility and pushing people out of their position to gain a little bit more map control. I'd judge it on your team setup and what they're bringing. If they have the hard breach covered more than enough, go with the stun grenades. However, bring that hard breach if it's not. Now, if you are interested in the brand new operator for us that has just released, I've covered a guide on him and there will be a card in the top right. As you've learned everything you need to know about Finker, if it did help, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe for more operator guides.